Doctor, tutto a post. So welcome back to a new video. And today, guess what? We will be continuing on this Linux journey where I'm trying to port uh, a big part of the C and C++ libraries to Linux. So what are we going to do today? Uh, today, I would like to uh, port uh, the async library to Linux using EPOL. Before diving into that, I would like to remind you that I've created a new Discord server that you can join and where you can discuss anything related to the library or to these videos. And so make sure to check out the links below. And also there are links to the GitHub repository of C and C++ library, which is a library that uh, is trying to make C++ easier trying to provide functionality without going crazy with C++ features. It's fast to compile, it has no dependency, so make sure to go and check it out. Now, let's dive into what we are going to do today. So I am starting with this connection to an SSH uh, VM. I have my Parallels uh, virtual machine running and I'm connected with VS Code on it. So. Of course, we can compile things. If you want to see how this was uh, kind of set up, you can check out the previous videos. So um, let's go and try to see what are we supposed to do on the async library. So right now the async library has different backends. One is the Windows backend, which is using all of these get over lapid.io um, type of APIs. We have an empty M script and backend. And there is an Apple backend that is using uh, KQ. Um, I, my idea and something that I have researched, uh, let's say a little bit earlier, was to um, find equivalent functions that I can plug in the KQ backend to somehow make it work on Linux. It will not be perfect. It will not be extremely performant, but I guess that's a start. So let's try to dive into that. So first thing I would like to do is to rename this to be, um, yeah, something like uh, async. Um, well, maybe I can keep it async apple, but maybe later we can we can rename it to async POSIX. For now, we I can keep it async apple. Um, so let's say if platform is Linux. We will include this one, but I want to add the define, like define and see um, async use epoll one. So every time we see this use epoll one, it means that we need to use epoll. Let's try to compile it. For sure, we will get many errors. Let's start from the first one. So all of this stuff needs to be replaced. So let's make it async use epoll else um, and diff. So this is the KQ branch of the if def. Let's compile it. So KQ was not declared in the scope. Okay, that's something else we need to um, if def. So if async use epoll, that's what we are going to do. Um, I think I could be replacing this with the equivalent function, which is this epoll create one that I have been looking a little bit before. Um, that's, um, yeah, there are, there are many variation of this creation of the epoll file descriptor. The epoll create one allows you to pass the epoll close, um, close exact, which means closing on execution. And we are going to do that. So this is what creates the actual, um, let's say the actual queue for asynchronous operation in the, in the kernel. So I am just going to replace KQ. So if you have an idea of, of how KQ works, like it creates this uh, uh, queue, that's what it is of asynchronous operations. We are just creating our queue of epoll operations. Um, oh, of course, we need to invert the branches. 
Epoch create is not being declared. I guess we need to include something. Yes, this epoch includes this epoch. Epoch. And this is right. So now we have the get async request. This is the method that is um, extracting our custom data structure, which is this async request that is associated one to one with each um, async operation in the kernel. So um, there is an equivalent field that we can use to customize the, um, sorry, to yeah associate our custom objects. And I'm going to use it as well. So the structure now is um, called epoll event, I think. And the field is something else. It's called data dot something. I have it written here because I've been checking all of these things before starting. Yeah, epoll data PTR. So that's basically where um, Epoll is giving us a place to save our, um, you know, our custom data. Let's do it like this because for some reason it's not being detected. So let's make it to do remove before committing. Um, <clears throat> now, now it's complaining about this top single watcher. Um, yeah, we can, we can fill it later or we can fill it right now. I guess it depends on, let's, let's get it to compile first. So maybe I'll, I'll be adding a, uh, a C debug break here. I don't know. I didn't know if this works in, uh, or we can just assert, yeah. Yeah, let's just assert. Um, of course, it's complaining about handle and filter being unused. Okay, and also there is no result. Now, erno, there is no erno. Let's add the erno here oops sorry um compiling it field events oh so instead of field events instead of key events we want to be doing the equivalent thing which is this um epoll uh, event so there is really a one-to-one -one mapping that's why it you know it's so easy to go you know fast at replacing them of course i already know things i should be replacing because i've been you know looking them up before starting the video um okay this is set event watcher this is the call that we use during the setup so each operation has this sequence of um let's say phases in the lifetime of an async operation so the setup is the thing that gets called when um, the operation is being submitted. Activate is called, um, you know, when um, the, after an operation has been uh, sent to the queue. And complete is called when the completion, so when the operation is finished. So when the operation has been declared as, hey, I have a notification for this async operation from the kernel. And stop is called either after the complete if the async operation has not been re-enabled or by the user manually if the user is canceling or stopping the async operation before it's completed so now i need to replace the set event watcher and i think um i i think i would like to change the name of this because yeah, as you see on epoll, sorry, on KQ, this is just setting some events, but this is getting committed later because this um, during the KQ call, which is, sorry, the key event call, this one, 
we are simultaneously sending new events to the queue and obtaining completion for the old events. But this is uh, not how EPOL works. Because EPOL, in EPOL, you have to uh, do things a little bit differently. Um, so you have to call an EPOL CTL add or something like that. Yeah. You have, so your operation is getting committed um, immediately. So that's why I prefer to call it add more than set. So we have to do EPOL, um, I think it's called EPOL CTL, okay. We need the file descriptor. Where do we get the file descriptor of the queue? The file descriptor of the queue is the, the FD, so basically the number that was created by um, during epoll create one. In our case, that's what we are going to do. Yeah, bring it as C try. Um, operation. So operation is the equivalent. So we need to add. So in on KQ we make add and enable. Here we do CTL add. Um, yeah. So let's let's go here. Um, file descriptor. So this is the file descriptor of the current async operation, which could be a file read or a socket write or anything like that. Epoll event. Um, we have to declare an epoll event. Epoll event 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 dot. Well, I guess we want to mem set it. Um, event zero size of event event dot data so we want to associate to the this is the custom sim custom field that we are returning here so you see here is also where we make the association with the async request so this is async event dot events is um uh, i don't think we need to pass the operation here we can just pause this filter and I don't even think we need the option. Yeah, we have no option in a people. This is needed uh, for writing the process. Um, yeah, only the process is specifying them because it's specifying some special flags for KQ to figure out when a process has been exiting. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that just like a, as any POSIX API, this will return minus one if it's going to have any error. Um, okay, key event. So let's go forward. I, I mean, for sure, some of these things will not be working immediately, but uh, let's try to get it to compile first. Um, so this is the key event. Um, let's make it um, well. Let's let's try to replace it with the proper thing. So KQ for listening is epoll p wait two. Looking for it. Epoll p wait two. Here is our function. So you see, it wants the handle to the Q object. An array of events and telling how many events there are in this array and there's a time spec which is um the timeout that should be waited for uh, before this is so you can say okay wait for any event until you know uh, 10 seconds have been passing and typically this 10 second is the how much time will it take for the next timeout to um sorry the next timer to timeout because there is the timer object on the loop that can wake up the loop every you know whatever number of seconds or milliseconds you are specifying um yeah we are using the pway2 because it has the time spec otherwise you should be using an integer timeout but as i already have the um, timeout as a time spec which is this thing here it's a struct time spec actually we can specify it um let's make it so epoll p wait two 
epoch file descriptor loop handle so it's very parallel to the events mm, maximum events is total num events timeout is the spec and i think we need to yeah this is returning the number of events right returns the number of file descriptor ready for requested io or zero if no file descriptor became ready during the requested timeout milliseconds perfect that's really similar to to the key event so if it's minus one it's an error and we 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 loop it only if it's uh it's been an interrupt interrupting the call but otherwise if it's another reason we return a failure and if it's all good we cast the results to number of events which is called new events so it's a really dumb name but i guess it's good for now so our next problematic call is this one um i i don't think we want to be flushing the queue because we don't need to be sending events to the queue we activate them one by one with epol ctl so this is probably not going to be needed at all yeah we don't need to do the flush the flush is called when we are submitting when we have too many handles that are bigger than the total number of events but in the in the case of epoll this should not care that much um yeah i i actually i'm not 100 percent sure but for now i will ignore because this is really something that kicks into play if you have more than the maximum number of events that i'm allocating which is like a thousand and something like that and right now we want to get just the basics working um so i'm sorry if this will not be super solid from day one but we'll make it more solid as we go now event validation this is a call that we are making from the async infrastructure let's say shared code to validate an event like um, that is returned uh, from from this um, epoll uh, epoll event so after calling the epoll p wait we will get a number of events and these events are getting um, in inspected here so we have a flag we need to return to tell if we need to continue processing because key event returns um, uh, is returning um, let's say confirmation of deleted events which we don't have on epoll so this can be made true flags i think i have already created the equivalent somewhere yeah in the validation we need to replace eb error with epoll error so is it event flags uh data no i think it's events equal there so or um uh, what's the other one event dot events and fall age up yeah these are for sockets so this is a uh, epoll uh, epoll error or epoll up. You know, I will probably you know remake this a little bit when committing, but you know changing the error names. But for now it's good. So um, read. Oh, so it doesn't find read and close. I think we have them in file descriptor. POSIX, they should be on the UniSTD, okay, UniSTD, close, read, write, all these things, okay, this is missing one parameter, 
set event watcher okay now we have we have the same pattern over and over for each async operation so we have for every operation the first one is uh, uh actually the first one is the timeout but this is uh this is not using any system apis any epol or kq api so um yeah i will if def this let's see epol and um, else let me if they have all of this set of async operation then we try to have them back one by one so now i should be complaining just about um not having any of these uh, results for all of the other async operations so what i would do i will make them template type name um async operation um yeah let's make uh, all of them templates so we can replace one by one replace them one by one return false let's return false everywhere or a result false which is the same result false return result false um uh, this is a sync operation and excellent we are almost there so we are really almost done in making this compile one more thing is um something that doesn't have the right size 128 okay i think i know we have here something that is um doing a sort of, sort of compiler firewall for our code um yeah it should be here somewhere in the async is the opaque object opaque yeah not the win over left the other one here we are so the definition we have the size of this uh compiler firewall object for windows for apple i think we should be adding some for the linux but for now we'll make it 128 and we are good to go so this is compiling now excellent so let's go and make the um, the um, async test so run async test as our first test report i don't care about the others so um, and the async test is cool because it does have a sequence of tests that allow us to you know the idea is to get them running one by one um yeah let's do, start start with the timeout and it's cool because each test is testing you know incrementally the timeouts then the wake up then the wake up with event object and you know everything is being tested um independently independently for sure we will not be able i think in such a short time frame to also fix the process um implement the process stuff i i think i know how to do it i've been writing down a few notes but i yeah i don't think we'll make it but yeah let's see i will keep an eye on how long the video is going to be and eventually stop it at some point so loop test loop is cre is just testing the creation and so starting a timer a timer running checking that the timer get is getting cold so of course this will not be working now pretty sure yeah let's remove the breakpoints oh this works actually oh that's unexpected is it really working is it really working yeah because it's calling the callbacks 
are we even hitting all of the um people create so are we creating this yes are we going to the people p wait yes well well yeah the i guess the yeah the time up stuff is easy because it doesn't use anything from epoll or anything like that so let's enable the second test so wake up from external trend what is this test doing it's called event loop create it's creating a thread and it's waking up the the event loop from that external thread this this one works okay it's kind of suspicious i'm wondering this should not be working because i'm not registering the file descriptor okay okay so this test is wrong to do this test is not actually testing anything at least on linux because even if i don't call the wake up this test is succeeding anyway i'm wondering why so let's try to see why the run once is passing without problems um so there are no async requests oh so it's not even going to the phase where we are listening because there there are no active yeah there are no active uh, requests we can we can fix this probably by adding a timer um no but if i add the timer if i add the timer it will eventually yeah this test needs to be fixed but i don't want to do it now yeah that's, this test doesn't work um let's say the next one wake up okay this test doesn't work which is what i expected the previous test to do um let's try to see what's going on so to for the wake up to find to work so what is the wake up again the wake up object is something that you can call from another thread that will wake up the event loop that is being run whether it's it's like silently waiting on some you know main thread or in general some other thread so we we, we are calling this wake up and the way it is implemented it's actually uh, very simple because it's it's a it's a file descriptor pipe it's a pipe actually in it, and we are just writing some random bogus fake bytes to the to the pipe um, so the pipe is being registered during this uh, startup phase in this create create shared watchers that um, I think should be called yes it's called at the beginning and then it's getting registered here so the problem is that I have been bypassing all of the wake up stuff, right? No, the wake up stuff is there. I have, I need the um, file read, file read stuff, because that's a file. The pipe is a, is a file descriptor. Yeah, so let's, let's copy this one and um yeah adding it here file read 
Okay, so this will not be compiling now because we don't have a set event watcher, but we created that. Um, um, yeah, that other thing. The what's called add return add event watcher async async got to file descriptor and we need the um, equivalent of ev filter read which is epoll in with optional epoll edge trigger yeah i've been reading a little bit about this edge trigger mode i think it makes sense to use it um but i yeah i will review eventually i'll try to use it everywhere and then i will figure out more in detail the semantics of these if they really make sense for each operation so we can check um somewhere documentation so edge trigger mode um do we have uh, yeah it's I was hoping for a more concise definition yeah just saying when you should use it not use it but there's no simple definition um, Edge trigger bug, but it's not even explaining what it is. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's a performance thing, but I, yeah, there are the fact. Um, then you continuously write file descriptor and delay again when using epoll edge trigger behavior. starvation if there is a large amount of is possible that trying to drain and the other files will not get processed causing starvation yeah well this documentation as you see is pretty pretty confusing i think it makes it says everywhere to use this edge trigger flag um because you know performance wise it's better it's not explained in detail, at least here, how and when this is really meant to be used. Oh, actually, it's here. The poll event distribution interface is able to be have both as edge trigger and level trigger mode. The difference between the two mechanisms can be described as follows. File descriptor represents the read side of the pipe, is registered with the epoll interface. Pipe writer writes to kilobyte on the right side. Account to epoll wait is done, return. RFD as the ready file descriptor, the pipe reads one kilobyte, a call to epoll wait is done. If the RFD descriptor has been added to the epoll interface using the edge trigger flag, the call to wait done in step five will probably hang despite the available data. Oh, okay, so this flag is telling us to unblock the wait call only when there is data and not when there is data available. So if there is someone is writing two kilobytes of data and you only take one, then you go in again in wait, you're, you know, this is uh, telling telling you that you are supposed to read all of the data because the epoll wait will not tell you, hey, there is still one kilobyte you forgot to, to read. So you will get the notification when the right side is writing additional data. Okay, now I understand it. I learned something. So I think we definitely want the epoll edge trigger mode. Yeah, I think this is good. Um, what else should I be doing? Um, yeah, let's compile it. Overflow. Yeah, we want to make this filter same type of these, which is a UN32. this event filter read yeah we have to implement the um, stop single watcher um, what is the equivalent for read 
is the epolin epol at trigger. Um, and the stop, yeah, we have the assert, so I have to implement it. Um, so this should be epol ctl, the same, the same as the other one that we that was coded here for addition. So let's do the same. Um, constant result. We don't want to add, we want to del. File descriptor event. So what is the event? Is a struct. Oh wait, struct uh, epol event 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 dot. Oh, let's mem set it event um, size of sorry zero size of event event dot data dot I don't think we need the pointer well it doesn't hurt I don't think we need it because this is not this is not coming back to our um, p weight epol p weight call and the events we want to be removing are our filter which are again you in 32 so meme set meme meme set was not declared here of course we can add some meme if you like but and the file descriptor is just on a handle this is okay now um will this now be working so we have the create let's place ourselves in the Mm, yeah, the not not the wake up operation in the this one file read. So this is adding the async file read that is reading is watching for reads on the pipe that is used to unblock the event loop. Are we getting a completion? So this is the P weight. And we are getting a completion, but this is a special completion, which is the one that checks. Okay, is this async coming from the result? Same as this wake up pipe read, which is the one we have been setting up during create wake up that is called during the creation of the shared watchers yes it is and so we read the data and we execute the wake up callbacks which is basically um yeah this calls here so we should be ending up here Let's see we are so the test is succeeding. Yeah. Very good. My feeling for this other test is that it should be working because this is just adding uh, the event object for synchronization, but it from the perspective of the um, of the async backend, nothing really changes. This is just invoking this uh, event object if it exists before calling the callback um so this is used for example when you are you are in a thread sec in a secondary thread compared to the one running the loop and you want the synchronization point so you want to say hey i'm calling the wake up but i want to proceed here after the callback that is exists on the on the wake up object that is gets executed on the on the event loop thread as fully finished. Um, this is similar to Yubu, I think, async object in libubu. 
very useful mechanism and this works of course because this is not really adding anything so now we have all of the socket stuff let's see how much time do we have okay we are at 40 minutes i think i don't think we will be able to do everything but i can try doing at least the socket stuff maybe let's see i don't want to make this video longer than one hour uh, and then you tell me if you would like me to do anything um, about all of also the other approximation in the comments so async apple oh we still have to rename this this is not apple at all so socket accept um, let's copy all of this fancy async operation on top of here okay compile problems set event watcher doesn't exist well now you know the pattern i think this is now pretty repetitive um so you see i that's, that's what i did when decide when deciding how to do this video i said okay well this is really parallel and i can i can show how you know how close the two APIs can be in some ways. I mean, you could be using them differently, but in a very, on a very simple approximation, they are they are similar. So this is an event filter read, so it's a epoll in. Um, do we need to also use this other flag that is equivalent of this, uh, not equivalent, but the, something that I have seen together with the um, yeah this is a, a flag that it's used when there is like the shutdown partial shutdown of a socket when you shut down the right hand but you still have the read end uh, you can finish reading stuff so i think i will add it for now and then decide eventually if i, I don't think i'm even I, I don't think i have any test that is checking for the behavior of this flags but i want the socket to properly handle this uh, half socket um, half closed socket situations so for now i will add it and eventually when we are let's say improving the library to a certain degree i guess that's where i will have specify uh, specific tests and where this will get tested properly um actually this is the except we probably don't need it now that i think i don't know well we'll see i think i've seen this useful for the actual read and write but not for operation not for the this is the operation that accept the socket new socket client socket connected to a listening server socket so this is socket accept uh, okay, let's see. Socket accept test. Let's try it. Oh, this works. It's beautiful. Well, this is the beauty of POSIX sometimes because things are, you know, the code that I wrote for macOS, in many ways, it's already good for Linux. So next, socket connect. So here we are doing some connections. Um, oh, we are also doing socket read and receive. I, yeah, I will disable this for now. Yeah, so this is failing for now. Let's get this first part of the test to actually run. So socket. Oh, look how laggy is this VS code under, you know, when they're probably putting some transparent stuff here on top that is really not efficient. When scrolling the portion that is disabled, it really slows down the FPS big time. 
anyway, so problems. We don't have an event filter right, of course. Use epoll. Um, yeah, let's use epoll. Else and if. And we add event watcher. It's, it's, this is getting boring, I guess, because it's so, so, it's so parallel to all the things we have done. So this is epoll out people out and also the stop of the async operation else and if and we want people out uh, get so get up has not been declared where is this socket? Is it sys socket? Yes, yeah, sys socket. So we want sys ball and sys socket. Get soft option. EV filter right. Why do we have two single stop watchers? Um, uh, oh, yeah, this is not really, um, yeah, yeah, we are doing syscall for each connected socket, yeah, oh, this means I'm even stopping two times the watcher in the last run. This code doesn't look extremely good. There is a to do. But this is not the occasion to fix it. Or improve it. So let's see. Uh, it, it runs, but it's, it's like stuck for a little while. Um, yeah, the number of waiting connection, I think is yes. So let's make it, um, yeah, with some, because it's waiting, it, it was looking like it was waiting for a socket to disconnect before connecting the other one. Okay. The, um, so I have increased the number of um, waiting connections. So how many connections can be queued when trying to connect on this service socket? Um, now we have the right to fix. Shall we try it? What time is it? Okay, 48 minutes of video. Mm, yeah. Well, I can try. So this is a socket send, right? Or is it a socket to receive? No, it's socket to receive operation. Well, I guess we can do both. Socket send and socket to receive. Errors, EV filter right. Why is it? Okay. So if you epoll else and if um, so this is add event watcher this is epoll out um, I think we can remove also this being repeated everywhere on the KQ last side but for now I will be using it like this. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's okay. I want to add another people thing. Uh, 
stock single watcher people people out and the same for the receive yeah same and if um people in and people in also on this one else and if people in set event watcher was not declared we add event watcher no problems and the test succeeds oh this is getting really really satisfying to do well we implemented both send and receive so will the send and receive work yes send and receive error works uh, let's check if they do work on in sequence i they do work on in sequence now we have socket close socket close well, this is not doing anything, so this will work for sure, I think. This works. Okay, um, yeah, I think this is enough for the video for today. So I'm going to stop the video recording now and I guess I can do another video separate with uh, implementing the read, write, close and process exit thing. So we don't make this excessively long. I hope you enjoyed what I did so far. So it was pretty satisfying getting most of the tests working for, for the async. I'm wondering if all of these tests are running, if also like some higher level test is, is working as well so let's try i don't know if this will be um working at all but worst case we will be improving them in the next video so the ones that i disable are the client and server test for http let's try to see it will they work yes so even the http module works this is this is all good so in the next video we'll yeah we'll fix these other operations because i think that they will not i suspect they will not work out of the box because the file async operations are not supported on epol I need I would need to use like a thread pool but yeah we'll see this in the next video so thanks for watching thanks for being so patient to go through all of this video and so make sure to subscribe make sure to um, take a look at the same C++ libraries repo which is linked below make sure to take a look at the discord server try to get in touch with me if you like on Twitter on X or whatever it's called Mastodon on on the discord and let me know what you think have fun and make sure to use Saint C++ libraries and see you next time. Bye.